Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and this is going to be a video tutorial using audio tables. If you like it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have a bunch more stuff just like it. Alright, in this video I'll be making sort of a phrase looper kind of based around stuff like the uh, Digitech Jam Man and other loop pedals. So the general idea is you'll be able to record one through four bars of sound and then instantly start looping it back. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is set up an audio table to use as our recording and playback device. And I'm going to give it a table size with an X size of 999,999, which is the maximum table size. And the other things I want to do is just give it a minimum value of negative 1 so that we can record, since most digital audio is in the range between negative 1 and 1, we can record all of the audio samples coming in. And I also just want to mention that we are using the audio table in index mode down at the bottom here as opposed to uh, milliseconds mode, which we've used in a few other videos. So in this particular video, we'll be indexing uh, all the audio samples by their number and not by their millisecond value in time in the file. While we're at it, let's just change some visual options for the audio table as well. We'll turn off the scroll bars and we'll set off the audio auto size for the X values. And we're going to do that because we're going to set our own range of what part of the audio table is visible at any point in time, depending on the length of the loop that we're recording. Alright, so the next thing I want to set up is a crossfader. And what this crossfader is going to do is it's simply going to pass the incoming audio to the output um, if the loop is not playing. And if the loop is playing, then we'll just send the loop to the output. So I'm going to use a button to control the X input of the crossfader, and we can name it loop. And meanwhile, the input to the macro is also flowing to the audio table, so we can use that to record the incoming audio. So next let's set up the WX input, which is going to tell uh, the audio table what part of the table to store the incoming audio at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out the sample rate using the system info module, and I'm going to divide the output of that by 1000. And what the, out the answer there is going to end up being the number of samples per millisecond. I'm going to use an integrator filter, and I'm going to supply that value to the input. So the integrator, the output of the integrator, is going to increase by the number of samples in a millisecond, each millisecond. So it's going to keep an accurate count of the index of the audio table that we want to write to. So we want to make sure that we set the integrator to zero um, when we start recording. We also need to turn the W input on using a hold module. And we're going to trigger the hold module using a button that can also reset the integrator module, like so. And the function of the hold module is to turn the W input on, which tells the audio table that you want to write the incoming data to the table. So we want to set the holds to stay on for the length in time that we're trying to record. So I'm going to use a tempo info module and we divide 4000 over the output of that to translate from uh, beats per second or hertz into the length of one bar in milliseconds. And then we can multiply that value by a knob called bars from 1 to 4 with a step size of 1 and the output of this will be the length in milliseconds of the number of bars that we've chosen with our knob. 
and we can actually multiply that value um, by the number of samples in a millisecond that we've already calculated up here and we can run that value into the X range of the audio table and now we'll display uh, exactly as much time as we're recording on the audio table. Okay, so the output of the hold module is going to be equal to 1 whenever we're recording data and as soon as we stop recording it's going to instantly snap back to 0. So I want to use that value to control our loop button that we created earlier. And what I want is for the loop button to be off when we're recording, and I want it to turn on the second we stop recording. So to do that, we're going to use a logic not module and an IC send, and we can connect the IC send to the button, like so, using the connect tab of the properties. Okay, so finally, let's have a way to read back the data in our audio table. So once again, I'm going to use an integrator filter in conjunction with our calculated number of samples per second. And we're going to trigger the integrator filter to be equal to zero whenever the recording stops. So as soon as we stop recording, we start playing back from the beginning of our recording. And we're going to modulo that value by the length in samples of our uh, loop. So we've already calculated that value as well to display, uh, to choose what part of our table is being displayed at any point in time. So we can run that value into the B input of the modulo and then the remainder is equal to our position, our read time. And I want to multiply that value by our loop button. And what this does is just kind of turn off the read marker on the audio table in the GUI whenever you're not actually looping through the data. All right. So now let's just rearrange some stuff on the panel here, and I'll give it a quick run through. Alright, so you can see there that the loop button turned on automatically as soon as the recording buffer was finished recording, and we were able to turn off the original sound source and still have our sound looping. So everything seems to be in working order. Alright, this is Salamander Anagram with Reactor Tutorials. Hope to see you again next week.